Hi everybody. Guess who's feeling back to normal? You know how you say? You say hi? <laughs> hi everybody. So we have been uh, a little vague on social media, not on purpose, but um, about what kind of been going on last week and what Gabriel with Gabriel being sick and all that stuff and we didn't vlog at all last week because we wanted to really just focus on him and him getting better and not be you know distracted by trying to produce a video so um, I thought it'd be easier to make a video that kind of said this is what happened so that we don't have to like tell a hundred people tell the story a hundred different times so even though we already have yeah even though it kind of feels like we already have so anyway um, it all started on uh, Tuesday, he was happy as could be on Monday, normal day, little sinuses, he didn't really know. Um, but Tuesday, about 10 o'clock, we were playing with markers, and I was actually shooting a vlog for Wednesday, and uh, and he just took a dive. Uh, you could tell he wasn't feeling well. He didn't well. fall. No. Nah. <laughs> he started to feel bad. His mood <laughs> took a dive. And uh, he got real fussy and real cranky, and he'd be kind of whiny that morning, but it I mean it got real bad, and he just kind of scream cried the rest of the day. So, anyway, um, of course, like you know, things normally happen, uh, you wait until the end of the day to do something about it. Um, Gabriel had been kind of wheezy, and I had thought it was like allergies, you know, and it had gotten a little bit worse and a little bit worse, and then about five o'clock, you know, when the pediatrician's office is closed, uh, we decided he should go to the urgent care to get checked out, so I took him to the urgent care, and they looked him over. And that pe that doctor diagnosed him with a uh, ear infection. Ear infection. Gave us an antibiotic, That's sent us home. Tried to give him an oral steroid. He didn't. That didn't stay down. So we, we, we came home, did the steam bath, you know, and uh, you could really tell. And Sarah was in, out of town for work, and she'd come back, and I, I told her what all happened at the urgent care. And we were giving him the steam bath, and you could see, you could hear him wheezing. His wheezing had gotten, I guess, louder. Yeah, he, his stomach and chest looked like he was really working to breathe, and that made me really worried. So we went back to the urgent care. So that doctor could look at him again because she had suggested if since the oral steroid he didn't keep it down giving him a steroid shot so we went to the urgent care she kind of observed him um and the, this whole time he's not let anyone yeah he uh, uses stethoscope on him he freaks out and just cries the whole time which makes it nearly impossible for the hard to hear nurses or yeah. physicians to hear anything so we were trying to she was trying to sneak up on him at the urgent care to listen and she really felt like um, he needed a breathing treatment with epinephrine. And you, when you get one of those, you have to be observed for a few hours. And the urgent care was about to close. And so she recommended we go to the emergency room, a children's emergency room. So so we did that. And that was our first children's emergency room experience. Which, if you want to go to some place incredibly depressing, <laughs> any church, children's emergency room, the facility was nice. It was an emergency room. Um, but there's just, you're surrounded by sick kids. It's so sad. it's an incredibly sad place to be. So it's not fun. And it's but like 10 o'clock at this point And Gabriel had the time of his life. <laughs> he was like, he thought the big TV that was, you know, low enough for him to reach was a giant touch screen. So he was banging on it and poking it and touching it and wandering around. He rolled around on the floor. And at this point we were like, you're already sick. We're already at the hospital. Why not? <laughs> So, so we finally got back to see the doctor. Um, we didn't have to wait too terribly long because he was what they considered having breathing issues, so they didn't make us wait too long. So we got back to a room, and he fought the doctor trying to listen to him and everything. The nurse, but, the pulmonologist. But they eventually <laughs> kind of diagnosed him with croup and decided to give him a breathing treatment and another oral steroid, which he took the oral steroid, we did the breathing treatment, and then we had to wait a few hours so they could observe him to make sure that it helped and his airways were a little less swollen and inflamed and it, so it was like one o'clock in the morning by the time we got to leave yeah and, and gabriel was not a fan of anything anybody did to him and he's very <laughs> verbal and so he would tell everybody to leave him alone <laughs> no get away close the door or i'll go home i'll go home <laughs> 
And so the breathing treatment actually made him feel a lot better and it calmed him down. And so I was able to get him to sleep for probably about 30 minutes. Yeah, a little bit. And then they um, released us and he was a very sweet and polite boy and thanked everybody because we were thanking <laughs> everyone. So we got home at like, I don't know, 2, 2.30 yeah, yeah. that night. It was late. The place was, the, the <clears throat> emergency room is 30 minutes away because it's a pediatric emergency room. It wasn't just a regular one. So we had to drive to it 30 minutes. So we got home late. It was a rough rest of the night trying to get him to go to sleep. And then he didn't really stay asleep very long. So I spent most of the night in his nursery and he just slept on me. So we woke up the next morning and um, I was just kind of observing him while he was eating his breakfast. And he was still wheezing. So I went ahead and called the, our pediatrician and made an appointment. We went in that morning and he loves our pediatrician and he loves our pediatrician's office, but he did not want to have anything to do with it. He was tired <laughs> of being poked and prodded and listened to. And so that was a struggle, but um, basically our pediatrician confirmed that it was croup. He did not have an ear infection, but it was croup. And she prescribed us um, another oral steroid and some breathing treatments of albuterol. Albuterol. We were supposed to do that every six hours. So we came home, started doing that, took a really good nap, got a good night's rest that day. We did our breathing treatments every six hours. It Jacob, took him it took him a little we had to create like the the breathing treatments at the doctor's office. He was not a oh, fan. Oh yeah, we had to hold him down. Hold him that. down and you gotta hold the mask on his face and he just cried. But here we were able to like we brought him up to our bedroom, made a little play area in the middle of the bed, and sat down, he sat in our lap and we put, you know, um, PJ masks on TV and gave him the iPad. And then he, you know, the first time it was a little, uh, but <laughs> after that, it, it's been smooth sailing. Yeah. He's pretty much. He's taken him just fine. And now that he, now that he's feeling better, mm -hmm. he gets bored quickly. <laughs> he doesn't want to sit still in one spot with the mask on his face. He, so we have to like. So now yeah. we're, we're games on the iPad people. Yeah. And we're he back to holding him down, but for totally different reasons <laughs> because he was like, I don't want to do this. I'm ready to go. So. But the breathing treatments have been an, an, uh, an interesting, and he has a little dinosaur mask that he calls it. He thinks it looks like a fish, so he has his fish face. Jacob was a trooper, and he has to get him in the middle of the night, like at one o'clock, and so Jacob will lay on the floor in his nursery and, and hold, hold the little thing, thing up to his and face. spray the albuterol in his face so that he gets, you know, so we could do a middle of the night breathing treatment. It was without our waking him up. Pediatrician's and recommendation. This last night was the last time Jacob had to do it which is good because he woke up he woke up <laughs> he sat up and he looked at me and I was like laying on the floor and I kind of went <laughs> and you know I thought about that that's got to be a weird thing to wake up and see <laughs> well I remember waking up with my mom um little kids if you're watching don't watch this part I remember waking up and my mom was like hovering over me after I'd lost a tooth and she was trying to get the tooth out from underneath my pillow. And I remember waking up and she was above me. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? So I imagine it's a similar weird experience. So, yeah, it was. But all that to say, he's feeling much better. He doesn't have any temperature. He's got kind of a runny nose and a little bit of congestion, but that's to be expected. He didn't have that initially. And so the doctor said that was coming. The appetite that's is That's manageable. He's not wheezing anymore. He's not struggling to breathe or looking like it's hard to breathe. He's back to his normal rambunctious all over the place self. We kind of kept him in this weekend just because he's still mm -hmm. recovering. We didn't want to take him out. And um, There was a festival we wanted to go to, but it rained the and they moved bad. it. They moved it indoors and we were like, well, we could go and do the indoor thing. But we just didn't want to take him out into the rain to get to the indoor thing. It was just the whole... Well, of course, we go to the grocery store, and they don't have the wipes to wipe down the cart. Yeah. So. We went into the grocery store to wipe down the cart, and there were no wipes. And we're like, well, <laughs> we have a whole bottle of unused antibiotics over there. Anyway. So, that's, that's it. it in a nutshell. We wanted we're to all back to normal now. Tell the story. It took us a week. It, from, from, it was like Tuesday, and now here it is Sunday. And things are... We get to stop the breathing treatments after his one later this evening. He's got one more today. We're done, so we're and, good. And then we're finished. But he got used to it. He did it, and so I think that if any future breathing treatments, it won't quite be so traumatic. Oh, and I did want to say, I think Jacob posted a picture of it, but when we followed up with the pediatrician after, 
he was completely fine and let everybody and their grandma listen to him with his stethoscope, let the nurse carry him, which he never lets anybody but us and family carry him. Yeah, he got on the scale. He hasn't wanted to get on the scales. Let him take his temperature. He never the, wants to do the that. The pulse ox thing that they put on your finger, he has hated doing that this entire time. That one he was like... And then they couldn't get it on that finger, so they tried another finger. And he couldn't get it on that one. They tried three fingers. He let them try three fingers. The whole time, I was like, where has this kid been? <laughs> so he was back to our sweet baby like normal at the pediatrician's yep. office. So he had a good old time. Wanted to play in the lobby. Didn't want to leave. We had to. So anyway, he's back to normal. Things around here are hopefully back to normal. And uh, we're going to, I guess, see y'all later. get back to regular vlogs this week. So thanks for watching. That's the update. See you later. We'll see you next time.